So now let's start with the factors affecting the resistance of the electric wire. There are various factors on which the resistance depends upon. As we have already discussed about it that the resistance is depend upon the length of wire also depends upon the area of cross section of a wire also depends upon the nature of material it also depends upon the temperature of electric wire so these are the various factors on which the resistance of the electric wire is dependent upon now let's first start with the length of wire what happened that the resistance is directly proportional to the length of the wire if the wire is of considerable long length then the resistance offered is also very large if the wire is of short length then the resistance offered is also very short so this means that the resistance is directly proportional to the length of the wire second is area of cross section the area of cross section is the cross section we talk about the wire if the wire is thick okay so it has a thicker area if the wire is thin so it has a thinner area so see here in the case of area of cross section we will considered only the opening of the wire if this is a wire okay this is a wire we are considering only the opening of the wire through which the resistance of the wire can be calculated out through this opening it is in circular in shape so the formula for area of cross section of a wire is pi r square because this is a circle now see if the wire is thick that means broad if you make the wire broad then what happens the radius increases if the radius increases so area also increases that means if the radius increases so area also increases now on the contrary if we make the thin wire that is we contract this area so what happened the radius decreases so if the radius decreases so from this formula the area also decreases so we can conclude that if the wire is thick the area of cross section is also more if the wire is thin the area of cross section should be also less now the resistance of a wire is inversely proportional to the area of cross section that is if area of cross section is large so resistance offered is less if area of cross section is less so resistance offered is more so in this line we can add that if radius is high so area is also high but resistance is less because area and resistance both are inversely proportional to each other now in this line also we can add that if radius is less so area is also less but resistance should be high we have seen the relationship between a and area of cross section and the resistance that if the area of cross section doubles so resistance become half now let's see the relationship between the radius of the wire and the resistance of the wire now what happened if the area that is a1 is equals to pi r square then the resistance offered is capital r okay now in the next step what you are going to do just double this radius now a2 would becomes 4 pi r square because we have double the resistance so we have put it r is equals to 2 r by putting this 2 r in this formula you will get 4 pi r square so now the resistance associated will become say r1 divide this two equation r upon r1 is equals to pi r square upon 4 pi r square this will get cancelled out okay you will get that r is equals to r1 by 4 that means if the radius becomes doubled so the resistance is decreased by 4 times 
So this is the relationship between the radius of the wire and the resistance of the electric wire. You can also put instead of 2R, 3R, 4R, 6R, according to it the resistance gets decreased. If we put 2R, so the resistance would decrease by 4 times. If we put 3R, the resistance would decrease by 9 times because there is a square. So, we can conclude that capital R, that is resistance, is inversely proportional to radius square. So, this is the formula by which you can relate the resistance of electric wire to that of the radius of the electric wire. Now, suppose if we take two wires, these wires are of different these wires are of same length and same area of cross section. So, how we will distinguish now? We will distinguish on basis of the, of the nature of the material. That is the copper have different resistance, the aluminium have different resistance, the alloy have different resistance. So, depending upon the nature of the material, the resistance or the conductivity increases or decreases. Now, the fourth is temperature of the electric wire. The temperature is when we heat up the wire or provide heat energy to the wire. The resistance is directly proportional to the temperature. That is if temperature increases, the resistance also increases. If temperature decreases, the resistance also decreases. So these are the factors on which the resistance of a wire is dependent upon. Now let's see numerically. If we denote the length of the wire by small l, the area of cross section by capital A and the nature and temperature are denoted by one particular symbol we will explain later on. Now let's start with the mathematical part. I have told you that the resistance is directly proportional to length of the wire. I have already told you that the resistance is inversely proportional to area of cross section of a wire. If we combine these two equations, so can we write R is proportional to L upon A, directly proportional to length and inversely proportional to area of a wire. But there is a sign in between that is proportionality. Now you have to remove this sign and put a equal to sign. In order to switch it, you need a constant. So let's see what is a constant. Remove the sign and, and make it as equal. Now L upon A. In order to convert it into equality, we need a constant and this constant is denoted by this particular. This is called specific resistance or resistivity. That is, this rho is called resistivity. This is also a very important property of an electric wire. Now see. The resistance is directly proportional to length, it is inversely proportional to area of cross section, it is directly proportional to the resistivity. This resistivity is also called specific resistance. Now let's study about the resistivity. What happened that R is equals to resistivity L upon A. Now if we put length is equals to 1 meter, and area of cross section of a wire as 1 meter square. So what we get? We will get that capital R that is resistance is equal to resistivity. So now how can we define resistivity in another way? The resistivity is said to be the same as the resistance of the electric wire when the length of the wire is 1 meter and the area of cross section of a wire is 1 meter square. This resistivity is dependent upon the nature of the material and temperature of the material. So, the resistivity is dependent on two parameters, the nature and the temperature. Now, let's calculate the unit of resistivity. The formula for resistance is R is equal to rho L upon A. Now, if we rearrange, okay, then what we will get that R into A upon L is equals to resistivity. Now, we know that this resistance capital R is given by the unit ohm. Area is given by a unit meter square. The length is given by a unit meter. Now, cancel this meter. What you will get? You will get a unit ohm meter. 
So the unit of resistivity is ohm meter. This is how the resistivity is defined. The resistivity is different for different material. Like for example, for copper, the resistivity is very low. The resistance or the resistivity is varied from material to material. As I have already told you that copper and aluminium have low resistance, while the insulators have very high resistance and alloy have high resistance. That's why these alloys like nichro, manganine, constantine, these alloys are used to make heating appliances. Heating appliances like the electric rods, the electric heaters, the geysers, the dryers, these are the electric appliances. The heating elements used in these heating appliances are made up of alloy or nichro. The nichro possesses two important properties, that's why it is used in heating appliances. The first property is that it has a high resistance. If the nichro has a high resistance, then the electrical conductivity is very low. But the heat passes through it is very, very high. That's why when we plug in any heat appliance, then the current passes through the nichrome wire makes the nichrome to produce lots of heat through which our purpose gets fulfilled. If they are using dryer, hair dryer, then also we require a lot of heat. If we are using geyser, electric heaters and so on. So through the nichrome, the current is passed and due to high resistance, the heat, excessive heat is generated. The second important property of nichrome is that it does not oxidize easily or it does not get burned easily. That if we pass a high current across the nichrome wire, then it can sustain at high temperature. It does not get oxidized nor it gets burnt easily. So these two properties make the nichrome efficient to be used in heating appliances.